What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and today... <sighs> okay, no we're not gonna stop, we're going to do this live. When things do go to plan, roleplaying is one of the most satisfying parts of life, particularly when talking about video games. The ability to truly immerse yourself in another world is a great delight. In fact, there's an entire cluster of Daedric Prince pocket realms ruled over by Sanguine, where individuals can indulge themselves in all kinds of dark and naughty desires. Perhaps one of these pocket realms is already accessible to us mortals. In fact, I believe I have discovered it, a hidden paradise full of the juiciest Skyrim mods and that's where I want to go today and I'm bringing you with me. Right now we're going to explore the Winter Sun Faiths of Skyrim mod by Ination, uncovering every inch, diving into every nook and cranny of its being. If you're begging to worship some gods, there's only two options. Firstly, following Fudge Muppet on social media using the links in the description below. Secondly, getting this mod. The Winter Sun Faiths of Skyrim mod allows you to worship a deity of your choice, and it's not just limited to the Divines and the Daedra, though that would be amazing enough. No, we've got gods from the Elven Pantheon, Yakudin, and Khajiit deities, as well as a whole host of miscellaneous but significant others, including Manamako, the Allmaker, and even Sithis. If you sleep rather soundly for a murderer, perhaps that last one will be your pick. But whatever you do, do not sleep on this mod. Ah! This is likely our favorite role-playing specific mod if we had to pick just one. Sure, there are other awesome essentials like the handful we generally use for our Skyrim builds, but as we've come to learn more about the godly realms, various deities, and their workings over the years, we appreciate this one to flesh out a character the most. This mod will only allow you to benefit from one deity at a time, officially. With all the cool benefits you'll be getting, this helps keep it balanced. However, you can still mentally role-play worshipping multiple deities where it makes sense such as multiple deities of the Nine Divines, of which it's hard to fall out of favor with unless you do something sinister. There are 51 deities to worship in this mod, which is simply astounding, and that means there are a lot of shrines. So in the interest of not making this video an hour long, I've put a Reddit link in the description below where user Alpha Hydri has compiled all of the shrine locations for this mod. There's a couple of ways to follow the deity you want to, such as doing their quest or finding their shrine, but don't think you can just follow any old deity regardless of who you are. Sometimes you've got to be playing the correct race. For example, only Khajiit can worship Khajiit specific deities. If you choose the right race, you may get to choose the deity you want to worship after reaching level 2 or finishing the intro sequence. Other times, a deity may even reach out to you. For example, when you first just interact with the Daedric Prince or when you read about them, the offer of worship may appear, regardless of other requirements. Do remember that if you try to play hard to get, they won't reach out again. It will be up to you to chase them and put in the work. After you follow your chosen deity, you'll receive a subtle gift, the prey power, and a list of religious tenets, which are their rules you have to follow. The subtle gift comes in the form of a follower bonus, and the prey power allows you to get on your knees and assume the meditative position. In this meditation, you'll raise what is called your favor with the deity you worship, aka how much they like you back. This all plays into how effective your related powers will be. There's no point in worshipping something for free, right? At least not in the greedy lands of Tamriel. So according to the mod page, praying once per day is sufficient to raise your favor as fast as possible. In my experience, you can pray more than once a day and still raise your favor, but you'll be limited to smaller jumps. Think of it kind of like praying once a day gets you plus 4% and praying every 12 hours gives you plus 2% but twice a day. Now that's not meant to be exact, but generally Really, that's the gist of what I've observed. When praying, you'll be able to check your favor level and of course to do it as much as you want for role-playing reasons. Some deities may restrict prayer to certain places or times of the day. Debella won't even let you pray unless you're naked, which is just perfect. You can also go straight to the source and worship at the shrine of your deity. So favor can heighten or lower many of the bonuses you receive and due to this I can't always tell you exact numbers when I explain the various powers for each one. Just know that more favor tends to equal more power, and when you reach 100% you unlock the big power. This is explained on the mod page as a dramatic manifestation of the deity's power on Tamriel, and they all work differently. 
They come under active effects and some cost favor and work kind of like powers. In fact, you can go beyond 100% favor all the way to 200%. Interestingly, some powers that cost favor, such as Azura's perfume of moon shadow power, can just be used over and over in combat until you fall below 100% favor and have to get it back up there again. And remember, if you're ever stuck with low favor and want to pump those rookie numbers up, you can increase your favor by following the specific commandments that each deity has. Going again against the wishes of a deity will also lower your favor with them, and some are more forgiving than others. I'm sure you can take a guess at who. If your favor falls to zero, you can kiss your deity goodbye, for they will abandon you. For those wanting to feel like Indiana Jones on the search for the Holy Grail itself, there's also rare lost artifacts of holy or unholy power that you can find in the game to get special benefits. They work like apparel pieces that you can equip at will. You can find them randomly in chests, and unless there's more than the five I've found compiled by Marby23, a Reddit user saving the day for a YouTuber once again, here's the full list with effects on screen. There's the Tempest Dominus, the Ebony Raven, the Goblet of Infinite Grace, the Lantern of the Ancestors, and the Stone of the Forebears. Now let's talk about all of the deities, and there's so many to choose from, which I absolutely love about this mod. In the interest of saving time, I've linked the mod page in the description below so you can search for any extra details like race requirements, so we can focus on exploring the coolest powers and various benefits on offer. You didn't think I'd start out with the boring nine divines, did you? Of course, on Fudge Muppet, we're going to kick things off with a big scary look at the Daedra for all of our Daedra worshipping fans. You'll want to hear all about this. I mean, Sheogorath involves never disrespecting cheese. Also, keep an eye out for the Daedric Prince that some of these characters are secretly worshipping on the side, and let me know if you spot it in the comments. Timestamps for each deity have also been placed in the description below. Now, Daedric Princes are much more selective than the Divines in who they allow to follow them, but you'll gain favor with them quicker than with the Divines, so long as you're doing their bidding. You'll lose favor faster as well, though. Azura, Queen of the Night Sky, will eventually grant you this Perfume of the Moon Shadow ability, which allows you to activate an enemy once their health falls below a certain point to paralyze them and bring them down to one health point. They're surrounded by purple magic, which looks really cool, and if your favor is high enough, you can do this to multiple enemies in the same battle. She's great to follow if you struggle against mages, blessing you with magic resistance from her shrine and always diminishing that of your foes, blocking them from absorbing spells too. Boethia, Prince of Treachery, can bless you with being better with one-handed weapons, rewards stealthy attacks and poison use, and makes you deal more damage when fighting one-on-one. -on -one. As a devotee, you can invoke superior Daedric invisibility for 90 seconds during prayer, which, if broken by a sneak attack, deals a whopping 50% more damage. Clavicus Vile is also super fun, benefiting conjuration users, and specifically gives you a list of like 40 packs to complete to gain favor, some being really really evil like murdering five people in one hour. The ultimate power here is to make a wish and get another perk point. Hameus Mora, the Gardener of Men, helps spells and effects last longer and has a devotee power which lets you raise a skill by one level when you pray, and in my experience you can keep doing this over and over until it depletes your favor under 100%. But most uniquely, this Prince of Knowledge allows you to make Eldritch Tomes, which gives you a variety of arcane benefits by collecting Eldritch pages from corpses and binding them together at a tanning rack. Hercene, Prince of the Hunt, would love for you to become a werewolf, and encourages quite a ferocious playstyle. His follower power, Bitter Mercy, makes you do double damage to living targets once their health falls low enough. What's super cool with this one is the devotee ability to invoke a hunt against the living within 500 feet, exposing them to Bitter Mercy and leaving them all vulnerable to double damage slaughter. You might like to know that Jiglag, the Prince of Order, features in this mod too, wanting you to slay Daedra and placing eight obelisks of order around Skyrim, which can be found and activated to gain 15 more points to health, magicka, and stamina. You can also trap an opponent in an invincible but paralyzed state with a stasis devotee power, which feels really cool. Malakath isn't a particularly interesting choice in my opinion, but goes perfectly with the right kind of build. You'll get benefits to your power attacks and be rewarded for defeating epic foes. The devotee power will ensure killers, that's you, are healed by an amount of the overkill damage dealt to the nearby victims. <laughs> 
Mayrune's Dagon is of course an option for any Mythic Dawn lovers and enjoys when you slay all those who stand in your way. When you pray, you'll literally be set on fire and drain your own Magicka, allowing you to gain more favor and eventually Burning Path activations when you stop praying at 20% Magicka or less. Burning Path is the devotee power and makes everyone catch fire around you in combat until finally exploding with even more fire upon death. Worshipping Mephala will ultimately allow you to put evil whispers in the ears of whoever is nearest to you during prayer, allowing you to seize control of them within 75 feet to fight for you. It's really fun, but a little buggy, at least for me, don't go using the archers, I tend to stick to melee targets. Her follower power makes sneak attacks deal more damage from behind, and her blessing benefits potions. Very sneaky, and very sinister. Meridia, on the other hand, mostly just wants you to use Restoration and kill the undead. She'll make you more powerful against the undead and has a devotee power where you can actually call down a Supreme Light Solar Strike from above Helios 1 style onto an undead opponent, which damages even more nearby undead. Molag Bao, the Prince of Domination, is a great choice for truly malevolent characters, especially vampires. He can reduce destruction costs with his blessing, but more significantly will let you absorb magicka and stamina from nearby enemies in combat. You can also banish foes to Cold Harbor, which is pretty OP, but it does use a solid amount of favor. Now, if you haven't been showering as much during self-isolation, perhaps you'll worship Namira, murdering the innocent and eating the corpses of the dead. She can increase your poison resistance and will reduce the poison resistance of nearby foes, making them susceptible to your poison strikes which she adores. Ultimately, you end up with this crazy ability where you can poison an enemy or put a human heart or piece of flesh into their inventory to attract insects, reducing their armor rating and dealing disease damage. Truly horrific stuff. Now, for those who just want to steal whatever they want, Nocturnal is an option to help you with your not-so-moral goals. You can pray to her to clear non-violent crime bounties, and as a devotee, you can actually pray to astrally observe the nearest person, being very useful for stealthy missions. Periite, the Taskmaster, and Prince of Pestilence, who seems to have been busy lately, actually rewards you with favor for catching diseases and accepting them from him. His ultimate ability allows you to inflict all of these so-called gifts he has given you onto a target, plus five disease damage per second for each gift bestowed. Yeah. Now, Sanguine is certainly a wild one, desiring that you indulge in mead, wine, and ale, find your way out of jail, and get up to no good. As a follower, he'll make all of your stats regenerate 50% faster while a potion, food item, or ingredient is active, encouraging constant consumption. His final power lets you press prey in combat to force the five nearest hostiles to start dancing for 20 seconds. You can't get much wackier than that. Or can you? Because Sheograth undoubtedly features in this mod too. Cheese for everyone, just never disrespect cheese or you'll lose favor apparently, but no one seems to know what it means. Worshipping Sheograth is as manic as you'd expect. His blessings are random and as a follower, he'll randomly put some effect on you when you pray. And when you pray, you can randomly lose favor sometimes too. The devotee power just puts another random effect on you when you enter combat. And they range from giving you over a hundred wheels of cheese, random gold, launching you up into the sky way too high so you die of falling damage, making you see double, teleporting you to random locations like into a pack of wolves in the forest. There's just all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Your attacks can heal enemies, healing can cause damage, basically everything is random and ridiculous and fun, and if that's what you're looking for, this is perfect for you. Oh, and there's a tiny chance he can randomly abandon you as well, which is just great. Veyamina the Dreamweaver is a lover of illusion and loves when you kill those influenced by mind affecting spells or even people who are sleeping. Her follower power increases the level cap of mind affecting illusion spells and it also appears to let you kill people in their sleep by activating them and choosing to make their heart stop. The ultimate ability, Phantasmagoria, lets you activate a sleeping person to summon an illusion of them to accompany you for an hour. Now let's do the boring Nine Divines, or not so boring should I say, as the Bella allows you to literally rip the clothes off someone and have them follow you around naked and in love. 
Yes, that's right, and as much as I said that to captivate your attention, it's 100% true, so get ready to be shown exactly that. After the Divines, I'll focus on some more niche options like the Dreadfather Sithis. Now, the Nine Divines are much more welcoming than the Daedra and will allow anyone to worship them. Building favor with them is slower than with the Daedra, but they're more forgiving, so it's harder to lose it as well. They'll all require that you don't openly break the laws of Skyrim. Akatosh pretty much just rewards you for living the most cliche Dragonborn experience there is. He'll make you more powerful against dragons in almost every way, and with his devotee power, you can reset the cooldown of your most recently used shout and power by praying. Now, RK is perfect for an undead hunting paladin type build. You get the ability to perform RK's rites, where you go down on your knees and raise your arms to the heavens next to a dead corpse, only if it's marked by this white smoky stuff emanating from it. It will disintegrate and you'll earn favor. RK helps with health regen, but also will bring you back to life with full health if you're killed in combat, so long as you're a devotee, but you'll need to pray to recharge it again, of course. Now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, Debella. This lady of beauty and love forces you to pray in the nude and loves when you're persuasive to others and get the lover's comfort effect by sleeping in bed with your spouse. She'll make this blessing improve all skills by 5% and as I said, when you're a devotee, you unlock the Debellan arts. Simply activate a foe in combat to strip them of their clothes and unequip all of their items like their weapons. They'll follow you around infatuated for 90 seconds, essentially rendering them a non-threat for the time being. Through my testing, I could only do this to one person at a time, even if I kept over 100% favor. Julianos, God of Wisdom, reduces spellcasting costs and can increase your magicka with his blessing. His devotee power simply makes spells and scrolls more effective based on favor, and he desires you to master magic and increase your magicka pool. Kinnereth actually gives you a sacred saber cat mount to summon and ride on if you become a devotee, which is pretty neat. And the follower effect gives you 10% movement speed in combat, making it quite the tempting pick from just a pure battle efficiency perspective. She likes when you go explore new locations, pray outdoors, and receive the voice of the sky, which is that effect you get for reading the 10 etched tablets on the 7,000 steps. Mara, the goddess of love, allows you to cure diseases affecting you and your allies by praying, and her devotee power heals living allies within 40 feet on a per second basis. She enjoys you being married and generous to beggars and to children, and loves when you go on a real estate purchasing spree, owning one or more houses. Stendai is a great choice for paladin builds, as he'll reward you when you go slaying undead and Daedra, and makes you take less attack damage from them. His devotee power allows you to spend 10% favor to gain improved attack, defense, and healing for five minutes or three battles. And who could forget Talos? No one who's ever been to Whiterun and heard Heimskir, that's for sure. He's another great pick that rewards the ultimate Dragonborn experience and is especially fitting for more traditional Nords. You'll deal more damage against Elves, and as a devotee, your shout cooldown will be halved whenever an enemy dies within 40 feet. There's no better deity to worship if you want to go on a legendary and violent Fusrodar spree. And finally, Xanathar, the god of commerce. He'll help you learn crafting skills faster and make them better too. His shrine blessing makes you better at improving items by 10% and as a devotee, you can actually pray to him to open a menu to directly buy and sell items. Worshipping Divines is sensational for a variety of role-playing desires, but some Skyrim players are seeking something more obscure. I'm talking about Ebonarm, Manamako, The Hist, and The Allmaker. Miscellaneous deities are an option in the Winter Sun mod. However, as far as the mod page is concerned, they're minor deities and tend to bring less powerful bonuses than the Divines and the Daedra. That said, I personally think they're really cool and often powerful for the right build, which is why I want to talk about them before the Elven Yakudin and Khajiit deities. First up, we have an obscure god called Bandar, who is most popular among Khajiit and Wood Elves. As a follower of this clever trickster bandit god, you'll gain a bonus to pickpocket at the expense of items being more expensive to buy from other races. The devotee power is just insanely fun, allowing you to place skooma bottles into people's inventories and then pray to Bandar to ignite them within 200 feet. 
Winter Sun also lets you worship Ebonarm, a lesser known old god of war that has since fallen out of popularity in mainstream faith. He loves when you slay Daedra and will make you deal more damage to Daedra and those who summon them if you follow him. As a devotee, he'll reduce the armor of your enemies within 40 feet and grant you the total amount. This is doubled against Daedra. You start and for those absolutely necromantic fiends out there who see a dead body and the first thought they have is wishing it would follow them around moaning for the rest of eternity, you can follow the King of Worms, Manamarco. He accepts all races and loves when you trap souls. While following him, your undead reanimated at night will last longer, and as a devotee, your reanimations deal more attack damage and regen health based on your favor level. Shore is also available for worship, which is a nice touch I appreciate in this mod, and as a follower you'll take less damage and stagger against elves. His devotee power actually sends a shield vein to help you when you enter combat against a mighty foe, and it's quite useful, even being capable of using dragon shouts. As mentioned, Sithis is of course an option for all the assassins out there. You can follow him from the very beginning if you're an Argonian. Perhaps you want to do some shadow scale role playing. Sithis loves everything you'd expect him to, and will make you harder to detect while sneaking by those within 30 feet. You'll also get a chance to find human hearts on people you kill, which you'll sacrifice to him when you pray. His devotee ability is called Call of the Void, and it's one of my absolute favorites. It allows you to activate a door while sneaking to briefly turn it into a void portal. Targets within 60 feet who aren't detecting you will get pulled in and killed, which is just so, so cool. If you've seen our greatest Imperial of all time video, then you'll be familiar with Saint Alicia, the Slave Queen. Choosing to become a follower of this deity will allow you to pray for a divine blessing of your choice, and such blessings are enhanced further based on your favor. As a devotee, under the influence of such a blessing, you can talk to most non-hostile humans and turn them into a friend and potential companion. The mysterious deity, the Skull Elect to worship, the Allmaker, is also on offer, increasing the power of your healing spell and giving you the ability to restore any of the Allmaker Stone powers by praying. The Hist can also be followed by Argonians only, of course, and you can pray to these ancient powerful trees in order to gain a temporary boost to all of your stats, gain 100% favor, and you'll actually be able to tap into their deep roots, absorbing the magicka and stamina of dead creatures and people within 60 feet. The divine beings that fled Nern soon after its creation are known as the Magna Ghi. You'll be able to follow them for enchantment recharge benefits and the devotee ability to pray and be carried to a location within line of sight. This is some truly epic stuff. You can fly between mountains and zoom across the map with ease. And finally, there's the spiritual forces of the old ways, which can be followed to assume the powers of an animal god by sacrificing costly gemstones, and eventually you'll get the powers of the dragon. There's a whole list of different animal buffs to choose from, and when you get the dragon one, it improves all skills based on favor. But if none of these fruity, unique deities are getting you in the mood, there's also the sacred ancestors of the elves. They work similarly to the divines in terms of rewarding long-term relationships, however, they will not penalize you for committing crimes, focusing more on perfection and less on helping others. Oriel, King of the Oldma, will make you learn all skills faster as a follower, and as a devotee you'll have skill effectiveness improved by an amount based on favor once it hits level 100. Ifri, god of song and forest and favorite of the Bosma, can be followed to have 10% more movement speed outside of combat and ultimately the ability to bring clear weather after praying and have stamina regenerate rapidly outside of combat. Magnus, a prominent original spirit and god of magic, can be followed for an interesting playstyle change. Your magicka won't regenerate anymore, so be careful, but the huge benefit here is spells cost way less to cast. The mod page says 75% less, but for me it was 50% less. You can pray to rapidly restore magicka, and as a devotee, praying will cast any beneficial self-targeting spells equipped for no magicka, and they'll last longer too. In the video, I used Ebony Flesh. There's also Finaster, the hero god, who will grant his followers 100% faster stat regeneration while standing still, but make it 50% slower when moving. As a devotee, you can pray to teleport back to where you last prayed before that, if you so choose. Another arcane elven deity known as Cirabane rewards you for learning new skills from books and studying a variety of spells. 
He'll make you more likely to find spell tomes and scrolls on slain enemies, and as a devotee, you'll learn all of your mage skills faster. And who could forget Trinomac, a great pick for High Elves, as well as some unique Orc builds. He can bless your two-handed damage and grants his followers more damage against humans. As a devotee, you unlock Manifest Divinity, allowing you to pray to become ethereal and remain untouchable until your next attack. Xarxes the Ageless One is a god of secrets, and it is said that knowledge Hermaeus Mora gave to him is recorded in the Ogma Infinium. As a follower, you can read skill books while praying to gain an extra point in the relevant skill, and as a devotee, you can actually reveal all the characters in a huge radius after ascending in a trance-like state. The final elven deity here is known as Zen, and this is a wood elf god of agriculture. This deity will make beneficial potions, food, and ingredients last twice as long and be more powerful if consumed while praying. And for all of you hoarders out there, devotee status lets you pray to open an unlimited extra dimensional storage space. Just watch out for wild animals trying to ruin your immersion. Now let's look at the Khajiiti Pantheon, of which there are only two options, and you must be a Khajiit. Khajiit deities in this mod understand surviving in a foreign land is difficult, and won't penalize criminal activity. Some may even reward it. Rajin, thief god of the Khajiit, wants you to get out there and explore the world, bribing people as needed and picking locks along the way. His shrine blessing will assist in such lock picking, and as a follower he'll even ensure you find more gold in many containers, with a chance to find an even larger additional sum. As a devotee you can pray to break a lock within 20 feet, making it a sensational choice for the thieves guild. And then we have Riddle Thar, known as the Sugar God, but really is more like a set of guidelines than a single entity. Following this less rigid religious doctrine will enhance all your skills and eventually lets you receive a blessing from an ancient main, said to be appropriate for the challenges you are about to face. I recently received a big boost to health, and soon after faced off against a mighty mud crab. And finally, the Yakutan Pantheon, which we'll potentially hear a lot more about in Elder Scrolls 6. According to the mod, these gods will not penalize crime. Leki, goddess of aberrant swordsmanship, is a great choice for many red guards wishing to master warrior skills. As a follower, power attacks will ignore part of an opponent's armor, and as a devotee, you can spend 5% favor to gain increased melee damage for 10 minutes or 5 battles. Mora, a Yakutan fertility goddess, also features in Winter Sun, allowing you to restore your own and your allies' health while praying, and as a devotee, you actually get given enchanted fruit when you pray, which can be eaten to fortify or restore stats. Sadakal the World Skin is one you may be more familiar with. Interestingly, the follower ability actually makes shrine blessings from other gods more effective and longer lasting. As a devotee, you can shed your skin, so to speak, praying to become reborn again, getting the option to shift around your stat points. The chief deity of the Yakutan Pantheon is Tall Papa, and those who follow him will have their weapon enchantments drain less charge. You can also cheat death with the Glimpse of the Shores devotee power, where you actually enter an ethereal state when defeated, but if you can finish combat in 10 seconds, you'll come back to life. Worshipping Tall Papa also places fractures around Skyrim, which I didn't run into, but from what I've heard, they look like floating clouds of lightning. Touching them should boost your favor. And finally, we have Hoon Ding, the make way god of the Red Guard people. This deity will reward one handed warriors, especially those who slay foes stronger than themselves. The follower buff makes staggering an opponent reduce their armor for 5 seconds, and as a devotee, you're given a chance to resist stagger from attacks and bashes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up all of the options for worship in this mod. Maybe you didn't just hear more about this mod, but also heard of some deities you never really knew much about. This mod is just so good for roleplaying sensational Skyrim builds, and I hope you liked this video of everything involved and how it all works. I really hope you'll give Winter Sun a try, and let us know in the comments who will you worship, and what build will you play, and what build should we make based on this mod. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and want to see more. We're happy to review mods if you'd like that, especially if they enhance the role-playing experience of the game or for particular builds. If you're wanting to follow the three powerful members of the Tribunal, head down to the Twitter links in the description below and see if you can find them. My name is Michael, thank you so much for tuning into Fudge Muppet, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.